Hi there, Keen State Bio. So I'm going to give you a couple uh, specific examples of how to work with image J. And I'm sorry because I know that these are very specific examples, so it might not be helpful in a lot of different situations, but hopefully you can apply some of these concepts in a couple different ways. So those of you that haven't worked with image J before, it's a lovely piece of free software that will help you do a lot of image editing. And what we want to do today specifically is we want to work on how we can count all of the um, cells that are fluorescing in, say, an image like this one right here. So image J has a counter. Let us go through and count these all by hand. But there are a ton in here, and that is going to be really miserable to do, um, especially if we have a lot of data that we've got to um, kind of churn through. So if you've got a bunch of these pictures, um, it's going to be a bummer to have to do that again and again and again and again. So we can use image J to help us do some of that task. But we have to make sure that we um, we take a couple precautions to make sure that, that will all work smoothly and seamlessly. So before we get started, one of the things that you're going to need is you'll need the atomic nuclei counter plugin for image J. So that's like a big old fat mouthful. Um, the easiest way to find this bad boy is just do a little googly search for what this guy right here. I ITCN plugin. So, for example, ITCN image J plugin. You can see right here, here's my little Google search. And what I'll get is I'll get this wonderful little page. And lucky for me, it's this top hit right here. So, do a little search for that. You'll find this exciting thing. You need to download this jar file. A jar file is a Java file. What will happen is it will take you to a page like this, you'll say that you want this guy, it will download it into your folder for you, into your downloads folder for you rather. Um, in your downloads folder you should be able to find it. It will have, it might have a little picture of coffee on it because it's a Java file. And so then you just have to take this file and put it inside of the plugins folder for ImageJ. And that looks like this. If you're working on um, a Mac, then you just have to find the file or the folder for image J, which should be here somewhere. Da, 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 da. Uh, so then inside of this guy, we just jump into our plugins folder and then we drag that file right into here. You can see that I've already dragged in my little um, ICTN file. And so this way, when we fire up image J, this plugin will be there waiting for us, ready to go. So that's the kind of preliminary work that you have to do before uh, ImageJ will do any of this operation for you. You just have to make sure that all of your ducks in a row are in a row, rather, so that this will all happen. So now we can get rid of this little wonderful page here. And let's dive into doing something actually with ImageJ. And I don't think I have got it fired up. So I'll, let me make sure that it's up and running here. So here ImageJ has got this wonderful little process uh, toolbar up here at the top. We'll get back to some of the things that you can do with that. So what I want to do is I want to be able to count all of the cells that are inside of this bad boy. And that can, uh, can be kind of frustrating or um, might pose a few hurdles. So there are a couple ways that we can get to that simply and easily. The first thing to remember is if you take a look at this page that actually tells you how this plugin works, which I do recommend that you do, um, it's Part of the way this particular analyzer works is looking, looking for areas that differentiate between high contrast and low contrast. And specifically, it wants to work with files that are in black and white or in 8-bit color. And so this file, as it is, is not going to work for us. So we've got to do some preliminary adjustments before we actually have something that we can work with. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to invert the color scheme here. Um, because by inverting it, we'll make sure that our little cells here that are normally a light color are going to show up as being a dark color. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. So to do that, we're going to go to Edit, and we'll go down here to Invert. That's going to invert our image for us. You can see it's going to give us this lovely pink color, which is totally useless for us, right? So how do we make sure that we turn this into something that's black and white? Well, we're in, I think, RGB right now, and what we want to do is we want to convert this into just 8-bit. So it's going to take, a, take this image from being a color image, it's going to slap it down to being just a grayscale image, and this looks dreadful, I know, but trust me, this is where we want to be. So, now that we've got our image converted away from being a color image to being just a grayscale image, and we've inverted the color scheme, so we've got dark areas that represent cells, 
Now we can actually start to do the work of doing the analysis. So to do that, we're going to click on Plugins, and there is our ITCN. That's going to be our little um, nuclei counter for us. We'll click on that. It'll open up this little window that's going to ask us a bunch of crazy questions, which might look like it's uh, a little intimidating. Don't be intimidated or scared by this at all. It's all going to be okay. So the first thing this is doing right here is it wants us to give it um, give this tool an estimation for the width in terms of pixels for these different nuclei that we're trying to count. So we could do this a couple different ways. We could grab our, one of our little measuring tools here and we can draw a little line um, and we should be able to get a, a rough idea of how big that is. So we draw our little line, we come back over and we say measure line length and it's going to come up with six. And then we would do the same thing to find the minimum distance between two nuclei because this is going to help it figure out how closely packed these things are together and how closely it should analyze this um, particular image. So we would do something similar. We'd find a, a fairly representative area where the, um, the nuclei are close together. We would say measure line length, it gives us seven, and then we would have to um, give it a threshold so that it knows how close or how much it should tolerate uh, differentiation between all of the different samples. Now I've experimented with this a lot a fair bit, so I can tell you that the numbers that you really want to use here is you want to say seven pixels, down here we want to say 2.5 and then finally for the threshold we're going to set the threshold at just 2. So for this particular image and you need to make sure that all of your images are standard in order for this measurement to work consistently. Um, for these particular sets of slides I'm going to go with 7, 2.5 and, and 2. Now that I've done all of this exciting stuff, I'm going to click on this little, or I'm going to make sure this little area is clicked right here, detect dark peaks, because this is going to make sure that it looks for dark regions on this particular slide, so it's going to look for these little instances of black. And then I'm going to hit count. And what this will do for me here, hopefully the magic will happen, what I get is a second image here on top of my old other one. And what I have is I've got little tiny peaks or little dots representing all of the different areas that represent a count cells. Now this isn't going to be perfect, but this is going to be a fairly decent start for us, or I think a fairly decent estimation uh, as long as you use a consistent um, measurement here in terms of the metric that you're asking it to examine. As long as that's consistent through all your slides, I think that we can tolerate a little bit of variation from the absolute result. So what this tells us here is we can see that if the number of cells is 740, it's examined uh, a ton of square pixels, and it tells us the density of cells per square pixel. We're not going to worry about that right now. We really just want to know this guy right here, the number of cells. So 740 in this whatever, we don't really care about the number of square pixels. This is really the, the exciting stuff right here. So. That's only exciting because this image has already been counted by hand, and the hand count came in at 744. So 740, I think we are we're close enough in terms of tolerance for error that we can lean on 740. So that's how you count the number of cells inside of a picture like this.